Hi, I'm Don from the engineering department at DR Power Equipment. Today I'm going to show you the unpack of our new DR leaf and lawn vacuum. It's a very easy process, should take only a few minutes, so let's get started. Okay, so first I cut the banding that was around the box. Um, I already took care of that. The next step is to take the cover off. And you just lift it off, lift it up and slide it off. The next step, both ends have a seam. You rip those apart. Very important to have your gloves and safety glasses on for protection. Okay, the next step is to remove the product package. Set that aside. Undo the bungee cords. The next step is to lift this large parts box off the car. You will need a helper for that. Next, we'll remove all these parts from the car. This is a Premier model, so it has only two wheels. If you have the Pro, Pro XL, you'll have four wheels. There's one cable tie holding the cart down. And then there's also two more holding the axle onto the pallet. You'll need to cut those. Now you can lift the axle from the pallet and set it aside. And to remove the car, you need to lift it up over the blocks and just pull it backwards off the pallet. The last thing to remove from the pallet would be this power unit. So we'll start by removing these four screws on this top block. You should have someone helping you at this point to stabilize this because once you start removing this, it will want to tip. While someone's supporting the unit, you can remove the bolt and nut from the front and back. The Pro and Pro XL will already have a jack installed and that aids in wheeling your power unit around. Um, it's optional on the Premier, usually installed after. So the next step is to pull it away from the rear block and then pull it off the pallet. Okay, now I've opened this large parts box and it has inside everything you'll need to assemble your collector. You also have a small parts box that has assorted parts. Your manual has a parts list that you want to refer to to organize these parts and get ready for the next step, which is assembly. We have three models. The model we're working on today is a Premier. We also have a Pro and a Pro XL. They are very similar, but there are some differences, and I'll touch on those points when we get there. You should always use this video with the manual. It is meant to complement the manual, and they should both be used together to make this an easy process. First things first, we'll start with wheel assembly. Let's get going. The first thing we need to do is tip the cart over so we have easy access to the frame. Take our axle bracket and mount it to the frame with the bolts and lock nuts, two on each side. Now I have both brackets in place. We must leave them loose to aid in, in installation of the axle and the wheels. So now I will install the axle. First bracket, 
in just a second. Okay, now to install the wheels. On the Premier model, it only uses one wheel, so we will install it with the valve stem and the grease fitting facing out so that we can access them later on. If you have the larger model with the two wheels, the first wheel must be installed with the valve stem grease fitting facing in because you'll be putting the second wheel on and it will cover that up if you don't. Okay, so next for the single wheel, we will put on a large washer and secure the wheel with a cotter pin in the hole in the shaft here. And you bend the ends of the cotter pin with pliers to hold everything in place. That's for the single wheel version. On the larger models with the two wheels, I'll go ahead and switch this around again to show you. The valve stem on the first wheel goes in and then we install a large washer in between the two wheels. The second wheel goes on with the valve stem and grease fitting facing out for access. Then a second large washer goes on and it all is secured with the cotter pin. And you bend the ends of the cotter pin with pliers to hold everything in place. Okay, so I have the axle and wheels installed. This is a Premier, so I did have two extra washers left over that will not be used for this application. Now at this point I tighten up both axle brackets. Okay, wheels are on, brackets are tight, now we can flip it over for the next step. So the next step is installing these gas springs. To do that, we'll have to pull the lift handle to release the cart bed and allow us to tip it back. One thing you'll notice, th there are only two studs on the Premier model. For the Pro and Pro XL, they will have studs on this side also because that requires two gas springs. So to install these gas springs, you have a hole in the end that will slide over the ball in the stud. And you have to remember that this chaff portion of the gas spring faces up and the fatter portion down. You just line up the hole with the stud and push it onto the stud. Do this end, you rotate the end to align with the stud. Pull your cart bat bed down just enough to line it up and push that end on. That's the first one. And like I said, for the Pro and Pro XL, do not install this gas spring yet. Now we need to prepare the power unit. And the first thing we do there, if you have the Premier and you ordered a jack kit, you need to install that. The Pro and Pro XL will already have one installed. Next is installing the outlet chute onto the power unit. I have my hardware bag for the power unit. So first of all you place this flange on the outside of this plate on the engine side. Bring it over and snap it over the flange. First hardware you install is a bolt lock washer and flat washer. On the back side just a few threads hand tight actually keep it quite loose. Now for the flange we have four bolts and lock nuts. You might have to move this around a little bit to get your holes to line up better and make it easier. Those we install loosely as well. Now to tighten the hardware, the first bolts you should tighten are these on either side. And that will level out the outlet chute. 
Now I'll tighten the back one. And then these two in front. Okay, so at this point we wheeled the power unit in place. Cart next to it, make sure that your cart bed is tilted up. Make sure that the jack is in its lowest position. And we have in a product package, that's the large package with your manuals in it, there is a small bag that has some hardware in it. Pull out the two shorter clevis pins with the clips and these are what you'll use to assemble this unit together. Now we're going to mount the car to the power unit and we start by sliding the car until we align the holes here. Insert the pin as far as it will go and then it's a good idea to have your helper lift up on the chute so you can better align the holes. Then you secure it with the clip. And you'll do that same process for this hole. Secure that one with a clip also. Okay, now that we have the two clevis pins installed to hold everything in place in the power unit hardware bag, this large bolt, large lock nut, you put one of these near each hole next to each clevis pin. Install the lock nut. And do the same at the front, making sure you don't pinch wires if you have a left start. Now we need to take this cable link off the impeller housing bracket. This is just where it was stored and shipping. Move it back here out of the way. And next, we'll insert the hose support into the impeller housing bracket. Next, we'll install the hose onto the impeller housing. First, you'll have to loosen up the clamp. Just enough so it'll slide over the housing. Uh, one thing you have to remember is this hose clamp needs to go on the housing just past this nub and what that'll do is help to hold it on. To install the rubber strap, we insert one end into the hose support. Loop the other end under the hose and back up through the hose support. Okay, now that we're finished with this part of the assembly, we can close the car and move this unit out of the way for the next step. You should make sure that you always close the car from this corner, the left side corner, on the same side that the handle lever is. Okay, now we're going to assemble the upper collector. I've laid it out here. The way you see it, you need the sleeve to be on this side and the flaps to be here. And the thing about assembling this upper collector is you need to follow the steps the way they are in the manual, the way they flow and the way I'll be doing it here. It's very important to get a tight fit. It is a tight assembly, but it really needs to be that way. Okay, so now I'll open this up further so we can gain access to the inside and that's the way we had it laid out is the black side facing up. We'll need to open this side up like this and I have both retainers here just to show you how to orient these. With the curve this way you look at the ends and you have an angled end and a square end. The angled end matches the angle in the fabric. The square end matches the fabric as well. The studs need to be facing up. So 
So I look at these. This one has the angle on this end, so that's wrong. That's the one that goes on this side. We will take the retainer, slide it in the back. One thing we want to make sure is tipping the studs back towards the stitching back here so that they won't catch on these holes. Just slide it through until you get almost to the end and it'll allow you to grab this end to twist the retainer and line up the holes with the studs. And then they just poke through like that and go down the line, moving each stud into the hole. Okay, now we install the other side. The only thing to remember is the curve needs to be this way. Both ends point away from the enclosure. Now we install the front retainers. In the front here near the sleeve, there's a pocket. Same idea, you will point the stud towards the stitching. Slide them in. And for these, the hole is on the opposite side. So you'll twist, push your studs through the hole. Now we do the same on the opposite side. The next step, I pulled out one of these side tube frames. And you'll notice there's a hole on this side, on the front side. And in that hole, we need to install one of these curved bolts. You insert it from the outside in. And you need to make sure that the curved head fits with the tube. Because if you don't have it in correctly, if you have it this way, it won't set in fully. So your threads will not be long enough on this side. So make sure it fits nicely into the tube. And to retain that, we have a push knot. You just start it on the threads. And then use a 7 16 deep socket. If you don't have a deep socket, a box end wrench works fine. You hold this side and push the nut against the frame. So now we put a knob on the end of this bolt, screw it on about halfway. OK, now I'd like to explain the orientation a little bit on this tube frame. For this side that we're doing, you need the long curved section towards the back the sh shorter straight portion towards the front so that when you lay it onto these studs of the retainer, this flange is pointing up. And by hand, insert the lock nuts onto the studs. You'll have five of those. And you do not want to tighten them down at this point. We need to leave everything loose till the end. And now you install the tube frame on the other side. For the next step, we need to get the two frames down inside the enclosure. So just make sure the ends are started, the front and the back. And then just lift up on the sides. And at this point, you want to spread them apart as far as you can. Like that. Okay, now we'll install the link assembly. And to do that, we need to pull the retainer back and fold the link assembly like that. Um, and it, it gets installed in the back side of the collector. And I pulled two bolts, flat washers, and lock nuts from the enclosure hardware bag. On the back side of the tube frame, we'll need to insert again one of these shorter bolts from the enclosure hardware package up from the bottom and also again making sure that the curved head fits properly into the tube and then we just lay a flat washer on top of that and do the same for the other side. Just 
and we need to tighten this down just before it touches the link assembly. We want it as far as we can get it without binding so that the link assembly can still rotate. And then you attach the other end of the link assembly to the other side. Leave the link assembly in the open unlock position until later. Next we'll install the curved head bolts that go through the tube frame and into the enclosure fabric. And it's very important to remember that in the front where the sleeve is that the shorter bolts are used and in the back the longer bolts are used. You will notice at this point that the holes in the fabric do not line up exactly with the frame so you will need to pull on the fabric, twist it around the frame to bring the holes in line like that. And insert the bolt from the inside through the frame, through the fabric, install the second one, get the curve head correct, and to hold them in place, you will install another retainer, the nut and you'll push it on with a 7 16 deep socket or box wrench and you do exactly the same on the other side. Push nut to secure it. Now we'll install the curved head bolts in the back corners and on the back this is where we'll use the longer two and a half inch curved head bolts. And again, we need to twist the fabric around the tube, get it very tight until the holes line up. And at this point, we just insert the top ones. Then we install the nut, the push nut, push it all the way on. So now I'm installing the longer C head bolt on the other side. Twisting the fabric around the tube to line up the holes. And again, I'm only inserting the top one for now, holding it in place with the push nut. Now I'm installing the tube frame handle in the back. You have to make sure that this part of the tube is facing up. and that the flap is up over the flange. Make sure you get the top hole. Bottom hole is still open. Then we install a knob to hold that in place. Now we install the other side. Pull it to slide that on. Now at this point, again, this is a very tight assembly, so you could use a helper if you need to. You can do it yourself, but it's easier with another person. So again, we'll insert the knob. Both of these knobs need to be left loose at this point until the end. So now I'm back inside the collector, and I want to close the link assembly. To do that, push these together so the bars are aligned and then pull the retainer over. And that should be very tight but not tight enough so that the link assembly bows excessively. If it is bowing excessively and you are really having a hard time getting this together then you can move this bolt and lock nut to this hole here and then try it again and it should work 
Bet. Okay, so next we'll install the lower C head bolts in the tube handle. And that is the reason that we have latched the link assembly because it will hold the tubes of the tube frames in line with the handle better. But you can also, as you're inserting the bolt, you can rack the collector assembly back and forth until the holes align the lower bolt. And secure it with a knob. And again, leave it loose at this point. Now I'm installing the hinge on the front. The first thing I need to do is unlatch the link assembly to take tension out of the collector. Insert one side onto these corner bolts. And you can you push on the hinge and pull on the collector and line up the other side. We have that. Next, you need to make sure you push these retainer studs through the holes where they go, like that, both sides, and install knobs on the corner bolts and the studs. Now I'm installing the top tube frame. First thing I need to make sure is that the link assembly is locked. And next, these plates that are on the top tube assembly, they need to be facing inside the collector. They need to be installed this way, not this way. In this slot right here, I slide this down onto the bolt, and then just tighten the knob just enough to hold it in place, not too tight. Then I go over to the other side, and I rest the top tube frame against the side tube frame and push down until the bolt locks into the slot in the plate. This is a smaller unit, so I'm able to reach over and do it. The larger units, you'll probably need to get inside. And also, if you can't push it down by hand, you can get inside and put your foot on top of the top tube frame to push it down until it snaps over the bolt. And then when you're finished, you tighten up both knobs, making sure that when they're tight, the knob is positioned so it's not digging into the fabric. Now what we need to do is come to the back and undo the Velcro of your flap and lift it over the tube frame handle. And again, we want to get it as tight as possible, so work the fabric and then push your Velcro back together. Now I'm installing the eye bolt. This was in the product pack. And to do that, there's a cut in the fabric down here. You need to push the eye bolt into the hole in the fabric. And from the inside, you can push the fabric out a little bit to get it started. And then there's a hole in the top tube frame inside needs to go through that hole and position it vertical like this and then you secure it on the inside with another knob at this point the assembly of the collector is pretty much complete the only thing we have left to do is these lock nuts on the side two frames are still loose we need to tighten those once those are all tight move to the front of the collector assembly and tighten the eight knobs on the front. Make sure all those are tight and then move to the back and tighten the four knobs, two on each corner. Now that we have the collector assembled, we'll put it onto the cart. You need a helper for that. and line the hinge up with the hinge on the car. Now we're ready to install the hinge pin into the hinge. You just slide it in like this. And it will, for the first time putting this hinge pin in, it might be a little tight and catch a little bit. 
So if you get to a point where it won't go in and catches, you can use a hammer to push it in the rest of the way. And when you have the hinge pin in, take a hitch clip, put it through the holes to hold it in position, put a hitch clip on the other end also. Now we need to pull the sleeve over the outlet chute. And it needs to be pulled past this bump in the chute. And then we hitch the cable up to the eye bolt. So now the premier assembly is complete. But if you have a Pro or Pro XL, you still have one gas spring to install. So you pull the dump lever to tilt the cart back. Go to the back. Lift up on your tube frame handle. All the way up. And at that point, you can install the second gas spring. The Premier does not have mounting for that, but the Pro and Pro XL do. And you will mount it in place like you did this one earlier. So now with the collector fully open, it's a good time to add your gas and oil. And a funnel will help access this oil fill. Now that I'm finished, I'll just close the back here. Another tip to remember when you close the back, you should push in the flaps so they tuck in and rest on top of the car. Now that we're finished, we'll close the collector, attach the sleeve to the outlet chute, and you're ready to use your machine. If you have any questions, please call our tech support team at 1-800-DR-OWNER. We hope you enjoy your machine. This is Don from the engineering department. See you next time.